There really are giants in the Bible. And here to talk about those giants in the Bible is Dr. Dennis Lindsay, and he's written a book called Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. Welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Thank you, Brother Gary. You know, uh, Dr. Dennis Lindsay has a, a very, very colorful background. He's been uh, in and around uh, Christ, the Christian missions movement, literally, I suppose, all your oh, life. Boy. Give us a little background on who you are and, and where you come from. Well, we have a little Bible school missions helping to construct churches for pastors and national ministers over all around the world. Started a printing company. My brother is still running that in the Minsk, Belarus, with printing millions of Christian books and Bibles. Uh, only the Lord could have done that. And then, in 1970, started a little Bible school down in Dallas, Texas. That's right. still going on. Now, uh, Dennis Lindsay is uh, president the CEO of Christ for the Nations. And tell everybody a, a little bit about what Christ for the Nations is, what it does, and so forth. Well, today our primary focus is uh, our Bible school, which probably we've had close to 50,000 graduates since 1970. And we're helping to start, we have about 75 associated Christ for the Nations schools around the world that our alumni have helped start. And so that is our primary focus. However, we're still involved in missions and helping to spread the gospel through our graduates, our uh, associated Bible schools around the world. So I have to ask, uh, what is a gentleman such as yourself uh, doing writing a book called Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim? Uh, and by the way, this is a really fascinating book. The way it's put together just pulls you along and, and you will want to go right to the very end of it. And we're going to talk all about the subjects covered in this book. But what led you to write this book? Well, my hobby is a biblical view of creation. I've been teaching that for 40 years, traveling and sharing mm -hmm. on it. And I started writing books about one a year in 1990. People are asking me, Do you, have you written anything? So I started writing on different subjects. I've written about 25 different books on different Ooh. subjects of a biblical view of creation. Mm -hmm. Students begin to ask me about giants. So uh, several years ago I started studying about giants. I found out 25 plus times giants are mentioned in the Bible. Maybe not the word giant, uh, but names, uh, Hebrew names that are referred to giants. Mm -hmm. So there's giants. So I started doing a study throughout history about giants, and one thing led to another. My sister got ed interested, who is living in Israel, helping there for 50 years, and I shared with her about the megalithic structure of a Stonehenge up by the Sea of Galilee, and she says, there's no pl such place, Dennis. I said, look at this. Yeah, that's not here, Dennis. I've lived here for 45 years. Go look on the web, my sister. She does and comes back and says, what is this? It, we're talking about 42,000 stones up to 20 tons apiece in five circles. And the Jewish archaeologists say this thing had to be built by giants. And they're older than the Stonehenge of England and older than the pyramids of Egypt. How did they get here? So I began to study uh. that. And that helped me to move forward in studying the history of these megalithic structures around the world. Well, as you were talking, I, we were going to put a picture in there so that people could see what you were talking okay. about. It's called Gilgal Rephaim. And Gilgal is uh, like in Hebrew sort of implies a circle or circles, yes. which is what it is. Mm -hmm. And Rephaim, well, you know what that is. It's the word for a, a particular class of giants. Nephilim. Nephilim. And uh, so let's talk about the giants and who they were. And, and uh, I, I'm fascinated by giants in a number of ways. For example, when Abraham uh, fought the four kings, you know, in yes. Genesis, there were giants involved. Mm -hmm. What were they doing there? And, uh, it, but you, and you see them. Uh, and we all remember the story of uh, 
of the spies who were commissioned to go into it, to, to Israel and spy out the mm -hmm. land. And then they go, whoa, I don't want to go in there. There are mm -hmm. people in there that are so big that we couldn't possibly uh, defeat them in any way, shape or form. So we're not going to go in there. Mm -hmm. And the, you know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. But giants are in the Bible and you have written mm -hmm. about them. Uh, some of them were very large. One of them in the Bible that we all maybe have heard about is King Og. Uh, uh, right up by those stones that I we were just talking about, his house is only about 10 miles away or the town he lived in according to the Bible, 10 miles away. And the Bible says his bed was 12, 14 feet long. He was a giant. Mm -hmm. And the Israelites came in there and killed him. So that's one of the stories that you can look up in the Bible. Tells a little bit about his size. He was a giant. And I think everybody kind of uh, pushes that away and says, oh, you know, giants, maybe, there were, maybe uh, this guy was uh, just a, a freak of nature. And maybe there were one or two giants, but there, were, there was no race of giants, was there? <laughs> well, if you, if you study history and you can go back, you can see that history says there were and unfortunately what happened in history is when the finally the destruction of the giants by the Jewish people uh, then you begin to understand what was going on. It turned into mythology. The story of myths about these giant creatures that were nothing but someone's imagination. That's what really happened and they began to be stories that were told all around the world. But if history, if you document history you can find giants were still living even after the time of Christ in various parts of the world. They are documented by the early explorers who came over to that discovered the Americas. And they document in their ship's journals that there were giants and they saw them and they recorded them. Now, to, to me, one of the interesting things about giants is the fact that, that God does not approve of the giants. In fact, uh, in Canaan, uh, he was pretty uh, forthright about how you should treat the giants. The Lord wanted uh, one of them wiped out, and he, he made <laughs> yes. no excuses. I want you to get rid of all those because they're evil. And that's, that raises a, a fascinating question, or a series of fascinating questions. And you've, you've covered a lot of that in your book. Well, uh, we know there, uh, there's a war going on in the heavenlies between Satan and God. God was put up, fed up with Satan's rebellion and of course kicked him out of heaven. And we don't know exactly what all happened, but we do know that Satan wants to be king of the universe. And so something happened. There's only a little passage back in Genesis that gives us a little understanding maybe of what happened. It says, uh, the sons of God. Mm -hmm. uh, that term there in the Hebrew always refers to angelic beings. Every time you find it in the Old Testament, sons of God is referring to angelic beings. Whether good or bad, it doesn't necessarily say the sons of God. Saw the human women were attractive and had sex with them and had hybrids, had giants, had Nephilim. Something's going on back in Genesis. The Lord says, uh-uh, this is not good. And he wipes out the entire world of all human beings and all life on earth, even the animals. Something terrible was going on. It has to do with these giants, these Nephilim, these hybrids. Something was going on with these fallen angels and these human beings. And he says, Jesus said, as it was back then, so shall it be just before the Son of Man returns to planet earth. So we can expect to see something going on in the coming days on planet Earth if it's not already happening right now in certain parts of the world. Let's uh, continue with that subject in a moment, but, but I want you to talk about something we talked about before we sat down to do this program. And you and I had a discussion about uh, the latter days, and namely today, and what's going on in the minds of, of kids that are growing up right now. They are looking for superheroes. And where are they looking? Okay. When I grew up in the city of Dallas, Texas, I went to a public school. Every morning I had devotions 
through the intercom, the Bible reading and prayer. That has long since been removed, so yeah. you don't have the Bible at all. So you only have secular humanism, atheism, evolutionism, that refuses to believe that there's a God that created. So therefore, what is the answer? How do we, how did we explain life on planet Earth? It is so complex, it's amazing that even evolution doesn't make sense to many secular professors and evolutionists. So they're looking to the heavens. Pretty soon we're going to be visited by aliens that's going to explain to how we got here. But still that doesn't tell us how they got here. So then something else happened here. What are we talking about? Aliens? And now the children growing up, they're saying, oh, we're being taught that there's no such thing as God of the Bible. And there must be aliens, extraterrestrial creatures out there. We need to understand that more. And now all the movies, Hollywood is in love with the Nephilim, with the hybrids, half human, half uh, creature, biological or mechanical creatures. Yes. We're seeing that more and more in movies. And every, almost every week they launch a new one. And, and, and it uh, sort of tops all the ones that exactly. went before when, in terms of godlessness, in my opinion. Exactly. Uh, there's a new one uh, about a, a female superhero. And, and she used to be a comic book character, but she was a man. And now, now she is Captain Marvel the woman. Mm. And she is going to make things right in the world. She's kind of a, of a heroine for all who would... Uh, uh, be looking, as you say, toward the heavens for some answers. And I think this, uh, this generation really is looking for answers. One of the sad things about some of these superheroes is they have something evil that is manifested. And that turns them into something ugly and mean and destructive. So that is part of this idea of Nephilim. Something's going on with these super heroes that we can compare with the fallen angels that something went wrong with them and they are passing on this bullied types at attitude uh, that we're finding in even these superheroes. They start out good but they end up being bad. So something is going on even in Hollywood to attract people and children are growing up looking at these superheroes and some of them are evil. Now we've talked time and again about the sons of God coming into the daughters of man and, and creating a race of, of uh, half humans. Mm -hmm. And God did not look kindly upon that and the, the world degenerated to the point that God said, I'm going to have to destroy it. We've all read about the flood of Noah. We come out the other side of the flood of Noah, Genesis chapter 10 and 11. And we see civilization starting on a very limited basis and growing and then men want, men want to build a tower that goes to heaven and then there's this uh, individual who rises up, uh, his name is Nimrod, to start the world out on its new course and he turns out to be a bad guy. Mm -hmm. and, and you've written all about this in the context of the Nephilim. And tell us about well, that. Well, one of the plans of Satan is to destroy all of God's creation and especially God's plan of redemption for you and I. He has a seed. God has given Satan, he says to the serpent, your seed will be crushed. A seed? Well we understand the male has the seed. We understand that Mary was a virgin and had a seed from God. Kind of interesting. So Satan is out to spread his seed and that happened with the Nephilim. We don't understand exactly what the seed is all about. We understand barcodes today in the, whenever we buy something there's a barcode. We understand we have a DNA that helps to explain all, everything about us, what yeah. color our hair. So we don't understand the barcode of fallen angels but they've got something in their seed that they're passing on to human beings. And if that human being has that barcode from the fallen angels, that helps us to understand Nimrod and it being passed on from generation to generation and even into some of the Nephilim or hybrids after the flood. Now after the flood uh, we find giants again. But wait a minute, I thought the giants were all destroyed in the flood. How did they get back? Okay. And, and there are many, many people asking that question yes. these days. And you've got 
a couple of chapters that well, really address that. There's several possibilities, and we don't know for sure, but here's one possibility. God had to wipe out the entire population, human population, before the flood. I mean, at the flood, time of the flood. His plan was to wipe them out. Why? All of them. Something was going on. The seed of the enemy was being spread. Is it possible? Now, when it says Noah was perfect, he doesn't mean he was sinless, but he was perfect in the sense he had faith in the Lord, and maybe he hasn't been contaminated with Satan's seed of the fallen angels. Maybe his wife, maybe his children were perfect. But is it possible that the children, or at least one of the wives of the three sons, had been contaminated, or that her parents were contaminated, and then she was contaminated with the Nephilim, with the DNA or whatever they had, and then they pass it on after the flood? Is that a p Yes, it is. We don't know for sure, but that helps to explain how you can have these Nephilim after the time of the flood when the whole world was being repopulated. Let's stop for a minute, and I think uh, to our listening audience, uh, we really need to address the subject of uh, what's real and what's not, because when we talk about this subject, we sort of float off to the edge of what you can believe. Like, did that really happen? Is that possible? Are these things really historical? Uh, do we know enough even to talk about them? But in your book, you reference several uh, writers of the, in the ancient world. You talk about the book of Jasher, you talk about the book of Enoch, and you talk about interspecies uh, uh, breeding that took place in the old days. And we've all seen, like in Egypt, uh, uh, a human with the head of a bird or uh, a, the, the body of, of a, uh, a lion with the head of a man. We've seen uh, those strange interspecies uh, idols. Mm -hmm. And we just think of them as idols. Nothing like that was real or couldn't have really happened, could it? Well, yes, that's what we often think, but the Bible, when you look in the book of Revelation and even go back to Daniel, you find something interesting in the second chapter of Daniel where it says the different, this big statue, the head representing the Babylonian, uh, the breast representing the Greek, the, the legs representing the Romans, and then you have the feet, half clay and half metal, and they don't mix. Mm -hmm. We are considered the clay, the dust of the earth. We're made out of the dust of the earth, the clay metal and it won't they don't it won't mingle the seed of man it talks about the seed uh, it, they won't mingle it won't they won't marry each other is it possible that these hybrids and even what's coming on the world now is a mixture of clay half men humans and something metal something from outer space whatever they are made of mingling Something is going on that the Bible says is going to be happening, and we're just beginning to see it. Today, what we are being told by the scientific community, they don't necessarily believe in the Bible at all, that there's a God, and therefore we're open to make hybrids today, half human, half animal. In fact, they've unraveled the human DNA, and they're telling us, hey, we can help you with different diseases, to cure them, if we take this gene or this chromosome out of this animal, and it will help you. It will help your eyes to see better. It will help your ears to hear better. It will help you to be stronger, and maybe even to live longer by taking these genes out of these creatures. So the scientists today are telling us that if we will allow ourselves to be receives certain genes and certain chromosomes from certain animals that it will improve our physical human life better. And we all know that certain creatures like the owl can see during... Mm -hmm. And if we take that little gene and splice it into our DNA, we'll be able to see better even at night. Or we'll be able to hear better. Or we'll be able to be stronger. We can run faster. We can live longer by taking these genes and chromosomes and splicing them in to human beings. Now what happens if suddenly 
the fallen angels are allowed to start coming in like Reve the book of Revelations gives us, wow, things we can't understand today. Right. But it talks about creatures that, boy, are strange. Is this what's going to maybe be happening? Yeah, Revelation talks about creatures that remind you of the old depictions, you know, of, yeah. of like the centaur, body, yes, the body of exactly. a man and a horse melded together. You quote from the book of Jasher. Uh, what Jasher is uh, goes back a long, long way. We don't con consider it to be scripture, right? But we do uh, consider it to be history. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a line in here uh, that uh, the, the the sons of God taught the the daughters, uh, the sons and daughters of men, the mixture of animals of one species with another. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you quote that, and then go on to to talk about it a bit. And that's a ghastly thought. I mean, and, it really makes you sick to think about. It. And Jasher's mentioned in the Bible, two, two, two places. Right. And so you're building the case very systematically, and I wish you could have a sense of how he writes, folks, because it's very, very clear. I love clear writing that just pulls you right along, and, and you, you have the gift. <laughs> so. Well, I've learned to write uh, in a simple form. I'm a lay person. And I try to keep it simple so the average person doesn't get bored or turned off, and they can understand it and even share it with somebody. That's the way I write. And yet there's a lot of information mm -hmm. in here, and your um, uh, forays, shall we say, into areas that have not been touched before, uh, you, do, you do a very good job of thank bringing, you, bringing thank those you, thank things you, forth. You. And, uh, and again, the name of this book is Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. And we're talking to the author today, and I, I, I'm, my job here is just try to explain what my reaction was to this book. I read a lot of books. <laughs> and the thing I love, and you all know this, the thing I love about books is when they've got, they're packed with information, but they're easy to read. And you've got that combination down uh, to a fine edge, I must say. Thank you. So let's continue. Where does this take us? That is to say, uh, we're trying to elevate our consciousness to, it, into a certain thing that's happening that the Bible said would happen in the last days. Well, one of the things I see, we are in a technological explosion. Daniel talked about this, that there's going to be an explosion of science, and we can see it. It's just amazing how fast technology is developing every month, every Ooh. year. And so with all of this, we are at the point of what is happening in the world of being able to do things that we've never been able to do before. And we want to help humanity. That is, we are being told that the purpose of these, ex these experiments are to help human beings to live longer, be stronger, be stronger, and to do things we've never been able to do, and to even think like we've never thought before. So can we do this? Now, if we're going to explore by all of the, in these, all of these uh, kind of garage shops where we're, people are doing these and mixing mm -hmm. these genes, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be problems of trying to mix human beings, taking the seed, taking the cells out of human beings and mixing them with animals or even with fallen angels that somehow become manifested and reveal themselves if they're given that permission by God. The Bible says they will be. So we're right there. And things are happening so fast in the political realm around the world. You know things are about to happen, so be ready. But the Bible says be careful that you're not deceived because these things that look good can deceive you. And one of those things is that little print that, that describes you and that little thing that you, when you buy a, something at the store, don't take the mark that is going to be offered you that could help you, that could connect you with some sort of an angelic creature or even a animal. You're not supposed to be. You're a human being. God's plan of redemption is to save human beings, not fallen angels, not hybrids, not creatures or half this or half, for human beings. God wants to save human beings. All of this sounds like science fiction, but let's face it, uh, the Bible addresses a level far above 
our uh, intelligence on planet Earth at the moment, and, and we read and believe the Bible. Uh, his name is Dr. Dennis Lindsay, and he's written Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. I, I highly recommend this book if you really want to sort of introduce yourself uh, to something that I think is a reality in our era. We're seeing the edges of it right now, and it, I think it's going to become uh, visible, sadly, in the very near future. I, I don't look forward to this. Giants, Fallen Angels, and Return of the Nephilim for your gift of $25. Free shipping anywhere in the United States. Go to prophecywatchers.tv, the online bookstore, and uh, just scroll down and you'll find uh, Dennis Lindsay's name. You'll find uh, the name of his book and you can order. Uh, free shipping anywhere in the United States. And uh, you know we love to put together packages here at Prophecy Watchers, and we put together a package of, of uh, not just books, but also DVD presentations. Uh, I did one called It's All About the Seed, and I did another one called uh, The Footprints of the Nephilim. And uh, we're putting together a package along with uh, Ryan Peterson's great book, The Judgment of the Nephilim. Yes, they are going to be judged. This entire package uh, for your gift of $50, free shipping anywhere in the United States. If you want to read all about it and check out the DVDs, you can. If you want the book uh, by Dr. Dennis Lindsay, we have that for you. And I think you're going to really be surprised at not just the readability, but the way that, that he applies the, this particular branch of knowledge to your heart. Because as Christians, we're all looking to be obedient to God. We're, we, and the part of that process is that we want to understand the things of God. And sometimes they're a little above our pay grade. <laughs> but he brings them down to a place that you can understand them. Well, if, you, if I held up the book and I explained it in a very simple fashion, the first third of the book is documenting these megalithic structures all around the world. We all know about a few of them, but they're all around the world. Something powerful, something supernatural was going on in the past that we're not aware of. They're all around the world, and technology is helping to reveal these things. That's the first third of the book. The second third is about the supernatural power of the enemy that the Bible clearly Reveals. So I deal with that. The power of Satan is out to deceive, and he's got incredible power. The last third of the book is all about what is happening today around the world. That these Nephilim are being presented to us, and they're coming out even in greater measures as we see we're being prepared on Hollywood's media. That's what the book is all about. So the media are sort of the advance men for the Nephilim. That's right. Yet to come. And you know, what, a, what, a, what a story. It's the back story that no, no one really wants to talk about, but we're talking about it. <laughs> and by the way, we haven't even begun to cover what's in your book. Uh, it, there's a lot more that we didn't get a chance to talk about. And I think we're going to come back and talk to uh, Dennis Lindsay again really soon. I'm Gary Steerman. Hey. You keep watching. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.